Hello, welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Angela Wolf, and today we are in part three of our Rachel twin set. So long. So I have to say, I'm a few minutes late because I was busy finishing my shirt. Now, the only thing I didn't finish is the cuffs. I mean, the hem, I should say, but they're all pressed up and ready to go. So this was on one of the styles we did last month with the Fashion Sewing Club. Just a little bit different pattern hack using the Rouge T as an original. So welcome everyone, great to see you. I see that uh, the uh, YouTube side popped in way faster than the Facebook side. So hey everyone, how are you? So I am live on Facebook and YouTube today, so leave your messages. I always love to hear from you. And today we're finishing that top behind me right there, which is really fun. So the fabric that I'm wearing is the exact same fabric as that, except I bought this more, just a really rich it's a greenish blue i would say a new trending color and it is so comfortable i have to tell you i've already washed it twice then i made my top today i'll go in the wash again tonight so i always wash it twice just to make sure <laughs> just to make sure Karina, i was thinking of you by the way because this top was a great suggestion for last month i am loving the draped collar so um anyways this fabric it can shrink a little bit because it's rayon. So if you wash it twice and dry it twice before you cut it, then you're twice as safe as it's not going to shrink. Now it usually doesn't shrink in the width, it usually shrinks in the length. Now <laughs> cropped, crop tops are in style, but that's not where I'm going today. So this is what I made, it was very fun. It really only took maybe, gosh, an hour total. Well, I was three minutes late to the Facebook Live show, so maybe an hour and three minutes from cut to finish. So that's not bad at all. All right, so for the top that we have behind us today, um, I already sewed together the sides, added the sleeves. So I'm gonna show you how to do some ruching on the sleeves and also how to add the collar and give you a couple of ideas on the collar because you could pattern hack that too, by the way. And I was just looking, I have to share, you guys have been posting some of the greatest, <laughs> cutest outfits ever. So let me just share my screen real quick. You gotta see this. Definitely, if you're not in the Angela's Patterns group, there's a lot of inspiration going on in there. So first off, I love this top. Is this Terry? Terry, this looks so cute on you. Where did you get those? Those I don't know if those are shorts or pants. She's out going fishing. <laughs> Great outfit, by the way. Uh, the color looks amazing. Definitely. Oh, hey, Debbie, I just got your message too. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So I will uh, contact you after the show. I didn't have time to call you before uh, the show. So no worries at all. All right, so let's see. There was a few others in here too. I think Janet made another Delilah. Great job, Janet. Love the flowers on the top. So cute. All right, and there was just a, oh. This one was like the best one ever. I think, I think June said, hey, I saw somebody going to get their uh, vaccine shot with this one because it has little slits in the side. This is the Delilah. I love the little hack you did. Looks great with jeans, by the way. All right, what else do we have? There's a few more in here. Here we go. Sharon posted this one that she did with, um, this was a pattern hack that we're doing in the Fashion Sewing Club right now, but you could easily do this yourself if you want to refashion the top with a raglan sleeve, raglan sleeve, and then add a few lace inserts. That turned out really cute. All right, and I was just looking because there's, Phyllis had the cutest outfit I saw this morning. Let's see if I can show you that, and then I'll get on to sewing, but I had to just brag about all of your beautiful clothes that you're making. Here it is. Okay, Phyllis, this looks amazing. I recognize the fabric. I have some right here that I'm ready to cut another top out of. So she played with different patterns, different fabrics. I love what she did to the collar. So she's got three different fabrics, ruching down the outside of the Delilah, the snake skin, and then the navy. I love those sleeves. Oh my gosh, those look fantastic. There's one more here. And what you did to the collar, great idea. 
So it was a great pattern hack. Phyllis, you get the all around award this week for uh, amazingness. <laughs> is that a word? It is now. Because uh, I tur I was flipping through there and saw that. And then I think the other favorite of the week, this was last week's, but I don't know. I don't think I showed it, was Clovis. So she made a pair of leggings to go with her top. And I love this. I love this fabric. Oh my gosh, Phyllis. I mean, no, this is Clovis. <laughs> Phyllis <laughs> and then Clovis. Clovis, I love that fabric. And I have to ask, I didn't look close enough to see if you put a stripe down the side, outside leg, or is it just the camera and the light angle? I don't know. I love it. All right. I make sure there weren't any new ones that popped in before uh, today. I looked this morning just to see what y'all were working on. I think that was it of the Angela Wolf patterns. Oh, no, no, here one. This was one, Dainey. This is what came in last week, right after the live show. So she did the lacy with the black lace and a black knit. So that's the blue top behind me that I've been wearing for sport, like a sporty look. Look at how cute and elegant hers looks. And Dainey, you're going to have to come on here live one of these. Or no, it's Diane. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put my glasses on, Diane. Diane, you're going to have to come on and show us your organization for patterns. I can see it in the back there. <laughs> so cute. All right. So that's your inspo for the week. Now let's go sew. So what I have behind me is uh, the top. I have the collar laid out because there's a couple ways that you could actually do that collar. Uh, so just put this up here for those. Not that. <laughs> there you go. For those that want to go to the website, I always put that on there for a quick sec. So the collar, do you want it to be one width wide or two? So if you were using fabric, I know a lot, quite a few of you purchased the fabric that Phyllis had with the blue snake skin. If that's gonna be the collar, you might wanna double it up. So when it drapes open, both sides look really nice, right? If you don't do that, then if it drapes open, you just have a wrong side to the fabric. So now I'm using the coral fabric which both sides really look the same, just like this fabric here. Both sides look the same. In fact, it's really hard when you're sewing it together. You almost, you definitely need to mark the wrong side of the fabric so you don't sew it on wrong. So I'm just gonna cut one width. I did have to make it a little longer. If you go back to episode or part one of this sew along, I made my sweater set a little bit longer, which made a big difference. So let me go grab this and show this to you. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna bring it over to you. All right. <laughs> so, by the way, this is the lacy that she was wearing. I am wearing it for sportswear, uh, which I just made this. I still have a little bit of this fabric left. I'm gonna. I'm trying to pick up maybe a couple more new colors for spring. So, if there's any of this, this is what we use for leggings with the mesh. If you guys have any suggestions of what colors you'd like me to add to the fabric list, just let me know. All right, but I'm using that as a base. So here is the jacket. And as you can see, the back I altered so there's no seam right here. I've already sewn together the side. Well, actually, I surged it. And the sleeve. Now, I had to laugh just right out loud last week when one of you said, Angela, my arms are not this long. Well, guess what? Mine are not either. <laughs> because you have the option here of adding ruching to your sleeves. Like I have ruching on my top right here. Ruching and ruching. It's just flattering and comfortable. So these sleeves I designed for ruching, but you don't have to add ruching. If you decide you don't want to add ruching, then just cut the sleeves. And well, I usually I add four inches for ruching, but I don't know how long your arms are. So what you might want to do is just Measure from here all the way to how long you want your sleeve, add a hem allowance, and then compare that to the sleeve pattern. Then you don't waste any fabric if you're not gonna do ruching. Make sense? Okay. Oh, hey, Mary. I wanna know, by the way, if uh, you're in Duluth, Minnesota, I wanna know if it, there's still snow there. Because I used to go visit my grandparents around this time every year in March and there was always snow, always snow. In fact, I used to go spend a week there 
every year up until they passed away, which was awesome. I love that place, but it's a little chilly. <laughs> okay. Oh, Karina wants turquoise. Yeah, turquoise would be a good color. So take a look at this real quick. This is where we're going to be adding the collar. So after we cut it, remember I told you there's a triangle here where we're going to, well, it's kind of like not really a triangle. It is kind of, but we're going to add that collar and it's going to extend all the way to the bottom. So let's go over to the table and take a look at the collar. All right. Oh, Arnell, I knew you were going to say purple. Do you want light purple or dark purple? Because that's the big question of the day. Light or dark? All right. Let me take you back over here. I think I have all the microphones on, so hopefully you can see this. All right. So I know this is a little bit longer than your camera. You can see this is the fabric that I just finished working on. It's still up here because I'm going to make another top, of course, a tank. So this is the salvage edge. I have, I folded this. This collar is too long to be able to cut across. Unless you do have a seam back here, or you could cut this on the fold. It's totally your choice, all right? I thought if I really didn't want to have a seam in the back, I could fold my fabric, so I folded it long ways. This is salvage on both sides, two layers, and I could cut this this way and i've already altered my pattern to add the extra two inches remember we had to x extra two inches for the length that we did for the top and what if i told you about the salvage before if the fabric is difficult to work with you cut it off well for this i'm going to leave i'm going to leave the salvage because i'm going to use that to cut First of all, your salvage might be nice enough that you can just leave this fabric raw around your collar, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and cut along here, giving myself a little bit of extra room so when I go back and trim the salvage off, I'll do it with the serger as I hem it. So it's two things in one. Now, because there's already, there's a seam allowance on here, right? This actually... Uh, is a half of an inch, which gives me an extra inch. You know what? It doesn't matter because at the bottom we can trim off if we have any extra. I always cut this longer than I need. All right. Hopefully I grabbed the right rotary cutter today. You just never know. I've got one I use for paper and one I use for fabric. I should put a big old sticker on there. Making sure I don't have any double layers of fabric under here. I know what you're probably thinking. Does that say grain line? Yeah, it does. Meaning that if you cut it this way, there'll be more stretch through the lettuce edge. But you can cut it this way if you'd like. It doesn't matter. But if you want the stretchy edge in, this goes sideways to sideways across the fabric, and you give yourself a seam in the back, remember, give yourself a seam, then you'll have plenty of room. So now, does this stretch enough? It stretches just fine. So I can use this and I can still stretch it for the lettuce edge. So it really just depends on your fabric, but I put this here for your safety because if you had, have never worked with knits before, if you cut this on with salvage edge over here to here, then you know that you'll have a lot of stretch. That's going this way. Make sense? All right, so let's bring this on over. over here all right so first thing I always like to check is if there's gonna be any mistakes that are gonna happen well can't really help if there's gonna be mistakes but you could try so if this is the center back you have to imagine this is gonna wrap around and it's gonna go down first thing I want to check is to make sure that it's long enough it's gonna go all the way around the edge and all the way down Remember on this little, the shape here is going to go down like that. That's how you get this little triangle point in the front, which is kind of cool. So I've got plenty. I've got at least an extra three inches on each side. So we're good. Any questions on that so far? <laughs> you guys are voting on purples. Purple, purple. 
quarter, uh, quarter, three quarters of a length sleeve looks great. You can also turn that into a short sleeve or leave the sleeves off and make a tank out of it. Kind of like a tank vest. That'd be very cute. I'd actually probably put even a little belt with that. Esther, I think two contrasting fabrics for this is going to be really cute. In fact, for the tank top, I'm, I'm debating. I, I love the blue with it, actually. But I'm debating. I think I'm going to put either the yellow with this because that's such a springy color or white and coral. I don't know. Which one do you guys think? Because the yellow, let me grab the yellow. It, it looks pretty good on here. Um, the yellow is on a huge bolt of fabric over there, or I have a piece in the wash at home right now, so I'll have to show you at the end. All right? Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine first. What I like to do first, green is white. Can you leave the collar off? Esther, if you leave the collar off, uh, this isn't quite big enough really to hold over. I mean, you could, but then you have to somehow finish this edge. So you're going to have to come up with something creative. Clovis is yellow. Uh, what I'm thinking is a two-tone two -tone tank top. Two-tone. So let's go fix this first. Do the ruching in the sleeves, and then we'll go back, and I'll grab that fabric, and you can tell me about the tank. So we're going to go to the sewing machine first, because I think you can see it better. Let me take this off of the screen. So it's not right in your face. There you go, a little better. And I like to baste this in first because have you ever tried ripping out surging stitches that start all the way down here and go up and around and over? Yeah, not so fun. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine. And you know what's on the sewing machine, my jean pockets that are still sitting there. I think that was from like two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right. Get with the program, right? Okay. I feel the first day in ages I haven't worn tennis shoes. I feel like I'm going to the prom or something, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> All I'm wearing are cute little boots, but uh, I don't dress up much these days. So these are my pockets I'm still working on. I still have some more to do for my jeans. That will go maybe for next week. Now, I'm just going to use a contrasting thread. I still have just a beige in there for now, which will be fine. Because when I surge, it's going to go right over this anyways. All right, so first things first. Mark. I've got surging threads all over the place. Mark your shoulder seam here, just like that. And fold this in half and give yourself a little snip at the center back. I usually do that right when I cut the pattern, but I forgot. Now I'm going to take this long piece and I want to have the salvage edge out. So this is the salvage edge here. So I'm going to surge along the edge that's not the salvage. Make sense? So fold this in half and figure out where your center back is on that. Now, some of you might actually have a center back seam, which makes it very easy to do. If you have a center back seam, you're going to have to pay attention really close here so you don't sew this on backwards. All right. <laughs> of course. I have this flipped around only because it's live. Slippery little fabric here, right? All right, I'm starting at the bottom again. Let's try this. Second time is the charm. Okay. And it looks like this is the salvage. Boy. That salvage edge looks so good, I could just leave that. I probably won't even need to surge that, but there's my center back here. 
All right, so let me just take this out just a little bit. Now on your jacket, if you have a center back seam, you want the center back seam to be like on your under collar. So this is the wrong side of the fabric and this is the right side of the fabric. I'm gonna put right sides of the fabric together. And that way, when this goes around my neckline, this kind of hangs closed, it'll be fine. Now you have options though. You could surge this with the wrong side because it kind of faces and then it would curl out, if that makes sense. This fabric looks great on both sides. I'm just gonna hang it here just for a second, just to see. Now, I'm gonna go with right sides together. Now, this is your choice. Now, if you have a center back seam, you would actually want that center back seam to be here, where it's facing the right side of the fabric. Because that way, when your collar goes over like this, or when it scrunches down, you won't be able to see that. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna look at this one more time. Because this jacket, I made it bigger. I actually think I'm gonna reverse this. So I have right side of fabric and right side of the fabric facing up. Now, when the collar opens, I've got the right side facing the right side. Make sense? These are choices that you have to make. I give you pattern uh, suggestions and then you go from there. All right, I just have to make sure that the, <laughs> I didn't mark the right side. I told you these look like exactly alike. So here we go. Right sides are facing up on both the jacket and the collar. So there's the right side, there's the right side. If you have a seam, it will be under here, which will be hidden once your collar flips over. So if you followed all that right there, you definitely had your coffee today. <laughs> now, when you attach this collar, you do not want to stretch the collar at all except one place in the center back, just a little bit, because it will help keep that center back seam on your neck nice and tight. But after that, you want it to be one-to-one, -one, is what we call it, where your collar is the same exact length as your shirt. Come over, and again, I'm just gonna run this through a basting stitch just so I can make sure that it matches. Now, when you run a basting stitch through with a straight stitch with knits, sometimes it'll pucker a little bit, but don't be concerned because what will happen is once you run the serger over that, all that little puckering will go away. You'll see what I mean. All right, and yes, I am using pins, but I'm trying to keep those in the seam allowance. You could use clips too if you want. I'm using a uh, silk glass head pins, by the way which usually don't pun puncture my fabric. Now, here we are, getting to this part here. I've got this triangle, or this, <laughs> I keep saying triangle. It's not a triangle, it's like an L shape here. Remember we put a little snip in that corner right here? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin all the way down to the first edge. And then this will just, open up right along your marking there. And I'll show you it closer after I pin it. Because this is gonna be a stitched straight line, if that makes sense. You're not gonna be stopping and making an L shape. You're opening the fabric up. This is another reason why I based it. And I've got plenty of room at the bottom because I cut my collar that much longer, which is fine. I have watched people that accidentally cut the collar short and it looks really funny. Well, a design element, I should say. Okay, so that's one side. And if I take you back here and look closely here, just come on in. You can see where that L-shaped opened up. So I pinned it here, I opened it up. Now I'm gonna need to be very careful here because there's a lot of fabric bulk there. So where I want to stitch is right along here, right into the snip and then on. So it's a straight, I'm stitching straight right across there. 
and then I'll have to make sure this fabric stays out of the way. All right. Let's bring you out to a here. I'm using the Brother Luminaire. Full disclosure for those of you that don't know me, I am a Brother Brand Ambassador, but I only use products that I love to use, so no brainer there. All right, so I'm changing my stitch length to a 5.0, which is a basting stitch. Maybe if you're using uh, like the PQ 1500 or something, you can make your stitch even longer. But again, when you're working on a knit, when you're doing this basting stitch, sometimes it will make your fabric pucker a little bit, uh, but don't be worried about that. Now, what you don't want to do, do not stretch your fabric as you're stitching, okay? Just let the machine do its job. Okay. And again, I'm not stretching the fabric. I'm just letting the fabric feed through. I'm using a half inch seam allowance in case you are wondering. It's in your pattern directions too though. edge yet? I think we're right there. So I'm just going to baste this and then I'll go back and check that I actually made it to the, there's the little tip right there. I just looked underneath. You want to make sure you get it past the tip. Or I should say your little snip. Your corner. How's that? All right. So, here you go, bring you in here, there's your snip right here, I'll put my finger behind it so you can see, that was my snip, and you can see I stitched straight across that, there's extra fabric here, but that's your point, so that looks great, and you just want to make sure that there's no puckering, no stretching on the fabric, and we'll go back up and look at this on the dress form, but now look at how nice if I take you out. So here's the front. And look at how nice this lays at the bottom. So this is that triangle piece right here. See how nice that's going to drape? And then I have this excess, which we'll do on the dress form where I'll cut that off. All right, so I really don't think you need to watch me do the second side. Now let's go ahead and add ruching to one of the sleeves. So first of all, these sleeves, because they're a sweater set, and I designed them for ruching. When you go to put your sleeve on, now I can't fit this on over my shirt, but it'll be a little bit looser through here because when you add ruching, you're taking up some of that and you don't want it to be super tight, right? Now, if you're not gonna add ruching to your sleeve, try it on and then you'll need to take in some of this because that'll be too big and it'll just look sloppy. All right, I left it big like that for the ruching. Also, if you're not adding ruching, you'll have to go ahead and try your sleeve on. You'll be taking in some of this, and then you'll also need to hem it shorter. All right, so going on the inside of my sleeve, I start about, let's just say this is about, oh gosh, just above your elbow. And yes, I am still using contrasting thread because I'll be surging that off here in a second. And start stitching, do a back stitch, and now we are going to add ruching. You guys have seen me do this a million times probably. I have twill tape, and I have this on my website in white and black now. And this is thinner than what I used to use. I used to use a quarter inch. This is three-eighths of an inch. Yes, you can use clear elastic, but have you ever tried a bathing suit on after you've had it for two years? That tells you why I don't do that. Because my top, some of my tops, oh my gosh, I've been wearing as long as I've known all of you. <laughs> Is that like eight years? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to change it to, you know what I got sidetracked. Hold on one second. 
We're not adding the tool tape yet. I got so excited, that was way too soon. First, we have to run a basting stitch. Okay, back to the basting stitch, <laughs> a 5.0. I'm starting above the elbow, back stitch, and then just run this right along your seam. Now, I've already served this. Typically, I would not. I would have just sewn my seam and then done this, but I was uh, serging it just to make it look nice, and then I thought, wait, I forgot to show you guys how to do the, ruch the ruching, so. Originally, you would not really need to do, run the serging along this whole thing first. That's what I was getting at. All right, and I'm just going to run this basting stitch down to the end. I usually try to leave a couple of inches before the hem. All right, lift this up. Okay, now you pull up on your bobbin thread. That's the easiest one to get the gathering going and if it breaks it's not the end of the world you can go run another basting stitch now i usually gather mine up way more than i'm possibly going to use because it'll start as you you'll see as you start stitching this it comes undone all right so that's a lot good enough for now. Now I'm going to change it back to a straight stitch and go ahead and grab your tool tape. I just, I can see your comments as I'm stitching. So if these are crooked, uh, if I, my stitching's crooked, it's your fault. <laughs> and yes, by the way, I saw somebody ask if the discount code is still available. I believe it's capital letters March 15th for Angela of Patterns. And if I, if it expired, I'll go ahead and add it till the end of the month for you. Because I know some of you emailed and said, I didn't know you were doing this so long. Well, you haven't missed a thing. Do a little back stitch. Okay. Um, and now. I'm stitching inside of my seam, not outside of my seam allowance. Does that make sense? Because if you stitch in your seam allowance, all your, when you go to serge this off or finish this edge, you're going to cut this off. So this actually goes inside of your seam. Just a little bit. And what I do is I stitch a little bit. I hold my finger. I'll bring you in just a little bit closer. I hold my finger on the fabric and stitch. And then kind of ease this out just a little bit. Finger on the twill, holding the fabric, and stitch. And what, by holding the fabric... I'm holding these gathers in place. Make sense? So if you finish your whole gathered edge and you get to the end and you're like, I have only two gathers left, what happened? That's because you have to hold that twill tape to the fabric to keep those gathers in place. Could you use a gathering foot, things like that? Yeah, but you know what? You're just making a lot of work for something that just takes like two minutes. Okay. And again, I'm using contrasting thread so you can see it. So that's one sleeve finished. And now what I will do is I will go back. Now, originally, like I mentioned, I would not have this whole edge surged yet, but I did, and I forgot I wanted to show you how to do this. So now I'll go back to the serger, and I will start surging up about right here, and then start to angle this in just a little bit and trim off all this excess seam allowance. That's a lot of bulk right there. In fact, even if I start just to cut some of it off, see the difference when that's gone? It looks like, wow, it's super gathered right here, but then when you cut it away, you realize, no, you just have some nice soft gathers. So as I run this through the serger, I can cut that off at the same time, but I'm just gonna cut it off so you can see it here. See what I end up with? gathers. And guess what? They don't stretch. The elastic's not going to wear out. That's a bonus. Not all bad. All right, so let's go back to the dress form. Okay, so 
I can see your comments. I see more on uh, YouTube. So if anybody on Facebook couldn't get through, sorry about that. All right, you ready? Let's see what we have. I see Joanna in here. Joanna, I looked up those machines for you and I'll be emailing you this afternoon as well. So here is the ruching. You can see a little bit better here. So if I put this on my dress form, now this side we didn't do, remember we only did this side. But now look at, see how, look, how nice that looks? So now because we had the right side, the right side of the fabric and the right side here, once I surge all of that, this kind of flips open. So you have your right sides. Now, I have a few other tops where I had it where the, I just kept this kind of enclosed, where I had it where it would tuck in. And you could always tuck that in too. So if you're using a fabric that has the, the wrong side isn't that great, what you can do is after you sew this together, take this piece of your collar, you can connect it and surge those together then you always have two sides that are finished. Now, if you do that, the only thing you might wanna do is make your collar just a little bit wider. And then you're treating this, instead of as one piece that can just flip around, you're treating this as a folded piece that's gonna be stitched and you have more of a band. Make sense? All right, now look back here. <laughs> I love how this drapes down here. Now remember, I cut this way longer. So let me go get my chop chop scissors. And you can see now, see what we did? That's your bottom. This is that section here where we did the L. And I'm just gonna trim this. Now you have a nice drape. So all I trimmed off was the collar edge so it, it meets up with that front edge. And that looks fabulous. All right, so here's my ruching on my sleeve. Looks a lot shorter now, should fit fine. And next, we have to take a look if we're, how we're gonna do the tank top. Now what about finishing the edges? Okay, so I could finish that. I could just leave it raw, by the way, because it's not going to fray, which is great, right? Hi, Lynn. Hey, Ian. <laughs> the wolf pack says hi. <laughs> I said hi. <laughs> I'm, whenever I hear the door open, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> who's here today? <laughs> All right, so what do you, do you need me? You gotta love live shows, right? <laughs> okay. On here, the, the knit is not going to fray, so I could just leave it. It'll be fine, which would look great, right? Or for those of you that were in my surging, creative surging class a couple weeks ago, which you could still take if you are new to surging, period, <laughs> uh, the narrow overlock looks great on knits. So it's not the rolled hem, it's the narrow overlock. And then if you stretch it just a little bit or adjust your differential feed, then you'll get a beautiful lettuce edge which is kind of, you know, it looks like a narrow edge, but it's wavy and stretchy. <laughs> is that the word? <laughs> hey, hey, everybody says hi, Wynn. I can hear him. I don't know what he's doing in there, but uh, it's a, where I know what he's probably doing. Susan, <laughs> tell Steve that Wynn has started to put the chairs together. So we have two classes uh, that are going to be in my studio in April. I'm so excited. Uh, there's a pants fitting master class and there's a jacket fitting master class. And I believe there's one more spot in the jacket class. I believe. So don't quote me. But uh, if you're interested, you can email me. It's the end of April. The jacket, the pants class is full with the waiting list. So, uh, oh, thanks guys for letting me know. I'll check it out. Oh, I see, Helen. I see. Boom. Gone. <laughs> so no worries on that. I think I got it again. Did I get him? Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's go look at the fabric and decide what we're gonna do with the tank top. And I think, do you have any questions on this, Rachel? Because there's only one other thing I was thinking. And that is, because I don't have any seams on the back now, it's just kind of, it just hangs. It's like a sweater. I love the drape of it, but I'm still thinking, let me get this on my shoulders correctly so you can actually see. There we go. So you can actually see what the back is supposed to look like. This could stay nice and loose like that. It's kind of cozy, comfy, would look great with a pair of jeans and a tank top, depending on how I decide to hem it. But I could always add just a little, just a little something right here. Some of you mentioned maybe having a band with a little bit of elastic right here. I haven't decided. I'm going to wait till I finish the entire top, including the tank top. So let's go look at fabric, and then you can help me vote, because this color would be too dark for it. Would be way too dark, right? So yellow or white? Come on over to the table. And I think I can bring this over here. All right, so you have, let me get some of this out of the way. So this knit is super soft, it's a rayon knit. And I told you I have a handful of colors now. I'm gonna be getting some more in, but this is coral. This is what I'd call dark, like a forest green. I have black white and yellow. So let me bring the yellow over. And I know, you all know why I have white, because you know I'm going to throw it in the dye bath. It's never going to stay white. But what do you think about these two together? So what I was thinking in my creative thoughts here on this outfit, if the tank is yellow and this is the jacket, that's fine. But then it totally does not look like you purchased it together right? It looks like you're just mix matching your clothes. So my thought was to do a yellow tank or a peach tank with yellow peeking out. I could have yellow peeking out of the neckline. I could have, oh wait, you, I, I really thought about this. Let me give you an idea here. All right. I could have yellow peeking out of the tank. So if this was the tank, and then this is peeking out. And then I saw this. You see that? Like a double cover stitch. I was thinking, now this is a very bright yellow. I don't know if it's gonna be too bright when it gets on the fabric. I have to check it out. Bye, Wynn. But on the fabric, it's, it's fine. Like on this bolt, I mean on this spool, it's like, whoa headlights, but on here it looks great. So what I was thinking is having maybe a color blocked, either a color blocked tank top or yellow peeking out of the neckline and the armholes and then using this and use a double cover stitch for the shoulders and the side seams, which would really give it a sporty, sporty look. So the tank would mostly be coral with some yellow peeps out of it. What do you think? I'm thinking it would be pretty stinking cute, but I'll let you decide. <laughs> oh, hey, Susan, washer and dryer, he's hired. No, washer and dryer's not hooked up yet. Fake piping in yellow. Hey, Kelly, that would look good. That would look really good. And then do you still like the double cover stitch on it? Because I kind of like that double cover stitch look. For those of you that don't know what a double cover stitch, it looks like if you look at sportswear where it has that nice stitch. So even if you don't have a double cover stitch, you could just use your cover stitch and put the seam in upside down. So then you have that really cool. Oh, I like that idea. Yellow tank with coral piping. Ooh, that looks good. Thanks, Veronica. Marianne, embroidery, now that's a good idea. I was thinking of adding embroidery to the jacket, but I thought, you know, I really just wanted to have something simple this time. Uh, but you know, I'm gonna be making more of these because summer is in the air and that seems to be when I'm always wearing sweaters. Cover stitch in yellow. 
Now, do any of you have any questions while you're sewing this? Because I know a lot of you are sewing this top. I cannot wait to see your photos, so be sure to share those too. Kim says she likes the decorative seam idea. I do too. I thought that would just be fun. <laughs> so, although actually, it looks really good with my sports top too. So I have a, I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of use out of this one. Oh, thanks, Denise. <laughs> I know. Well, I was also looking at maybe just doing a full color block, which you might have seen that recent episode on my YouTube channel. Um, so I don't know. You know, I have enough fabric. Well, yeah, I know I have enough fabric. <laughs> but I mean, I have enough fabric of each of those colors that I could make a couple of tops because maybe one is the coral with the yellow peeking out. Maybe one is a completely colored block, coral and yellow. And then maybe one, uh, see, I just don't look good in white though. White, I could wear a cream colored, but white, white's just too stark white. So I don't know. Plus when you wash colors like that, that are ran, sometimes they can bleed. Mm, maybe that could make it look like I intended it to bleed onto the white fabric. I don't know. <laughs> Put it in some hot water. Let's see what happens, right? Oh, Sharon, are you? That's right. You're still out camping. Louis, what, Louise, what talk did you have on yesterday with the black sleeves and neckline? Um, I have to go back and look. I don't know. Uh, I think I was wearing, I think I was wearing the ruched tee that I pattern hacked quite a few years ago where I made it into a V-neck. I think, unless I wore the black I have to go look now. I don't think I have it on here. I'll go look and I'll tell you. <laughs> Make both. Oh, hey, Kelly. Uh, the salvage on my sweater knit is kind of a decorative. Could I cut the facing piece on the cross grain to take advantage of the salvage on the edge? Yeah, you could. You could. You know, and in fact, I've done that with a lot of my sweaters that way just because... Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you go. You just want to make sure, this is really important, just make sure that when you're stitching that you're not stretching going down on your top as you're, don't stretch your collar as you're attaching it to your jacket. Otherwise, what happens is you'll get, this won't hang nice and flat like this. It'll be puckered. That's why I like to baste it in first and make sure that the collar and the jacket are both one-to-one. -one. So there's no puckering. The other thing is do not at all use clear elastic or twill tape along this whole center front. Because what happens is your fabric is draping. It's hanging. The, the knit is draping. Just like if you were using, say, a bias or something. The fabric has a perfect drape. If you go and add twill tape or clear elastic to stabilize your seam along this center front section, what happens is that will hold that seam into place where the rest of the knit is draping, <laughs> drooping. It'll look droopy. So it almost does the effect of when I tell you to cut off the selvage. So if that makes sense. Uh, oh, Pat, which top am I wearing? So this top I'm wearing is a pattern hack using the Rouge T. I right, turned it into a cowl. We did this in Fashion Sewing Club last month. I think we did like four of these. So you guys are saying Facebook is not behaving. All right, any other questions for me? <laughs> I'm glad you're liking this so long, Jennifer. Oh, couch various colors. That would look really cool on the tank. Uh, you're welcome, Kelly. All right, everyone. Our hour is just about up. So if you have any questions for me, holler. Just let's see. Do I have anything for you? Tomorrow is Fashion Sewing Club. And we're finishing up our lace top. Uh, let's see what else. Tomorrow at noon is a live show on Brother, for those of you that want to see that. Let's see what. Let me just check who's coming on tomorrow. I haven't even looked yet. I get so excited because they're so creative. I get so many good ideas on there. Oh, okay. Uh, one vote for color black.
Hey, Beverly, I am. That's tomorrow, too, in the Fashion Sewing Club, where we're finishing our top, and then I'm showing you how to pattern hack another, just a, a ready to our top. Uh, let's see. I'll make sure that the coupon code is this for Angela Wolf Patterns. If you need anything, I will make sure that it goes up until the end of the month. All right. And tomorrow is, oh, Brenda Anderson. Oh, she's fun. And Jane Olson. So that should be a very fun day tomorrow. That's at 12 o'clock. Fashion Sewing Club's at four. A new episode of It's So Easy on Saturday. And I have my videos almost uploaded all the way from the last season of It's So Easy that we taped here. And I will let you guys know when those are up too, because that will walk you through sewing the Bella. There you go. That is the coupon code. Oh, you're welcome. I would use the yellow. Hey, you know what I was thinking, Catalina? You know what would be really cool? Actually, kind of what you just said. Um, a cutout. So if I have two layers of the tank top where I have maybe the yellow underneath and the coral on top, do little cutouts and maybe do some hand stitching around there. I don't know. It ha that could be kind of cool too. That's a very cool look, almost like a reverse applique. Oh, thanks, Debbie. All right, so I'm sorry about those of you that had a hard time on uh, Facebook today, but hopefully the replay will be good. You have a good week too, Lynn. All right, everyone, have a good day, and you can always message me. Oh, you got the wrong day. No worries. Tomorrow is Fashion Sewing Club. Thanks, Annette. Have a great day, everyone. And if you need anything, holler. Be sure to share photos of your Rachel twin set. I can hardly wait to see what yours. I want to see your color combos because I'm also working on a few other colors. And once I get those finished, I'll let you know. Oh, you like the cutouts, Ivy? I thought so, too. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any of your last comments because it's always there's always a little delay. Oh, hey, Marion. Happy sewing, definitely. Great to see you, Linda. Sounds wonderful. All right. Bye, everyone.